today on Hitch 20. What to leave off the screen. And it's such a great masterclass in suspense. Just think about how Jaws works. In his episode Poison, Hitchcock creates danger without even showing it. You must be careful, it may be anywhere. These are the forgotten gems of Alfred Hitchcock. Join us as we explore the 20 television episodes Hitchcock personally directed. The Hitch 20. Hitch 20 is made possible by Michael Weesey Books, the world's top publisher of filmmaking books. And by Asden, quality audio for filmmakers. And by Glidecam, world-class camera stabilizers. We also enjoy the inspiration of subscribers like you. Thank you. You have everything bubbling up. All of life comes to a forefront in the situation. And that's what Hitchcock is great at. He's great at taking the normal life and all of a sudden it's the most climactic moment in a person's existence. Now this story of a man with a MacGuffin under the bed, is there really a snake? The audience doesn't know. But when you have a director like Hitchcock presenting this whole story, the audience will take an extra leap. The audience will trust the director to take them somewhere great, and it pays off. It's such a great masterclass in suspense. You have two actors in one room for about 30 minutes. How do you make that suspenseful? Alfred Hitchcock told stories through carefully planned camera shots. So it might be surprising that what he left off the screen is just as compelling. In fact, the suspense he created around what you can't see is equally if not more intense. He said the power of the filmmaker is minuscule compared to what the viewer can make happen in their own mind. Right away we're swept in. Who is this man? What is he doing here? Why are we here? He walks in, he's a stoic cowboy, and we're like, all right, this guy's legit, let's see where he is. Turns the corner and hiss. His friend's hand pops up, and right away we know something's off. Timber, come here. What's the matter? He says, wait, stop, and we see this man, lying in bed, sweating profusely, he's about to die it seems like, and his friend couldn't care less. It makes me think, either the cowboy's crazy, or this man in the bed is crazy. One of these two guys isn't right. Just stay still. That's difficult. And stillness is one of those elements of suspense. I've got a 20 uh, uh, suspense, iconic suspense scenes, and staying still so that you're not discovered usually by the bad guy is, is one of those things. I found myself as an audience member, I was breathing softly, I was being quiet, and I was being still so I wouldn't disturb them. I was so concerned for this guy. If you think about how Jaws works, Jaws has the shark under the water, so we never know where it is. Here we have the snake on his belly, and there's a sheet over it. It could strike at any time. Talk about acting skills. You have a man that his whole purpose is to lie in bed with pretending a snake is on his stomach, sweating profusely, whispering, pulling the audience in so you care about him, and all it is is a man with a sheet over himself. This guy kills it. I haven't been bitten, not yet. It's on my stomach, lying there asleep. And this evil cowboy walks in and doesn't help him. He's stomping all over the place. He like almost reaches for the sheet. And that is what I call poking the tiger. It's an anticipation of an event, if we're dealing with suspense, that event, then the audience might forget about it over the passage of time. So what you need to do is poke the tiger. Remind the audience that that, that snake is on his belly. Remind the audience that there's, that there's that fear of him being bitten. And you have the cowboy Timberwood stumbling through, yelling at him, what'd you say, what'd you say? Yeah, I'll call the doctor. He has to pretend like he's figuring out how to use the phone and he dials 718. I love these three digit phone numbers that they used to have back in the day. This guy obviously wants Harry Pope to die. Oh, I'm very sorry. Got the wrong number. Should have used my glasses, huh? Here they are. And let's see. Huh? Uh, uh, 
Yes, a gambler. Pay. 718. I told the opera 713, didn't I? Well, you know, eight and three look a lot alike. Yeah. Shake of a lamb's tail now, chop, chop. And we think he's such a jerk, but I always like thinking in like a Hitchcockian mind, but maybe it's the other way around. Those Hitchcockian long takes just got easier with the versatile, lightweight Glide Cam Stabilizer. A Glide Cam on your production means smooth, flowing video. Glide Cam, the name and future of camera stabilizers. When it comes to setting up your shots, directing your actors, fixing your screenplay, and of course, saving the calf, Michael Weesey's experts have every production topic covered the world's top publisher of how-to books for filmmakers. Aston Sound Production Equipment is known worldwide, synonymous with performance and reliability. From shotgun microphones to wireless mics and mixers, Aston gives your film the sound it deserves. Aston, quality audio for filmmakers. The intro with Alfred Hitchcock is him presenting his new product for the audience. It's an anti-pickpocketing machine, which is a rattlesnake in your pocket. It's a new warning device I've instituted to sound an alarm when a pickpocket is at work. It comes in several sizes, including very small ones for ladies' purses. He's very alert. So I think it. It gives us a great light and a stupid sense of humor to what's about to be a dark thing. And it shows that Alfred Hitchcock can kind of jump back and forth between all these different genres, these different tones. And I think it's really kind of beautiful in a way. Poison is originally a Roald Dahl story, the third in a row that Hitchcock directed. Hitchcock fans will notice Wendell Corey, who was also Detective Doyle in Rear Window. It's a secret private world you're looking into out there. You have Harry Pope, who's this alcoholic kind of ruining everyone's life. You have Timber Woods, who's this kind of passive aggressive evil man until he has this exploitative moment in which he can take advantage of his friend. We also use another element from another genre, uh, the heist film. Um, they have this precision plan that they come up with. I know what we must do. There is no other way. We must administer anesthetic to the creature where it lies. And we go through all of the steps of that plan, and that builds suspense for when it doesn't play out that way. And here comes the Alfred Hitchcock Presents moment and the twist. Oh, maybe this protagonist isn't trustworthy. Maybe we shouldn't believe everything he's saying. Is there even a snake? At the end, you have the reveal that the snake is actually there. We see it as the audience. It's a unique perspective that we get that no one else in the room does. Now we know something the characters don't. And so when they switch positions, I'm rooting for Timber Woods to sit down. I'm like, sit down, get bit, get bit. Ah! We're left with a shot kind of like the end of, of Psycho. Watching his friend die, it's really dark. The doctor's gone, Timber. Hurry up, Mary, please! Hurry, hurry. It's, of course, that revenge story. You try to exploit someone, do something bad, and it bites you, you know? <laughs> Pun intended, I guess. It, at its core, is a horror story. It uses dread instead of suspense. Suspense is the anticipation of a known action, a ticking bomb, and the we know it's going to go off at a specific time, and there's a, a clock that shows the audience when that time's coming up, and every minute it ticks by, the suspense builds. Here we have that same scenario with no clock. <laughs> 